Hi, welcome back. This is the Yarn Creations podcast, all about my knitting and crochet. And my name is Adele, and I live in Pretoria in South Africa. Uh, I'm going to try and see what I can show you today. One of my small little problems is that my husband come and goes. And I always feel a bit um, self-conscious when he is at home and I'm talking to my phone. And he is in and out and I just, I just can't do it. And he works at UNISA, University of South Africa. And he is near um, retirement. And uh, things are falling apart at that university. So... Um, he spends more time at home and doing his work at home than being there. So uh, whenever I get the opportunity, I will try and quickly do a little podcast and show you some of the things that I'm doing. Um, I just want to mention again, my home language is Afrikaans. So I sometimes struggle to find the right words or I might speak slower than English speaking people. Uh, because I'm thinking of which word is the, uh, the best one to use or whatever. So, and sometimes I have to quickly and abruptly say goodbye because my phone mostly records up to 45 minutes and um, if I forget to watch the time, then um, uh, I have to quickly say goodbye so that my phone doesn't cut me off before I can say goodbye. Okay, so I've got a few things I want to show you. Uh, the first one is a, a finished object that um, I've shown on Instagram. Uh, on Instagram, I'm my yarn creations, and on Facebook, I'm yarn creations. If you want to uh, follow me there as well, I give a lot of details. Uh, of uh, the yarns I'm using, the pattern I'm using, if I'm joining squares of some kind, I um, try to specifically say how I do the join or which tutorial I'm using. So this is my mitered square blanket that you've seen a few times. It is finished now. Um, as I said in previous podcasts, I did uh, the nine uh, mitered squares and I uh, gave each of these nine mitered squares a border or a lock cabin border and then I joined it with the, um, I mostly use or I, I very much like the continuous single crochet PLT join by Cypress Textiles. She's got a, a lovely uh, tutorial, photo tutorial that I like to uh, look at when I'm doing this. And, um, but she's showing it into every stitch. I'm doing it in every third stitch most of the time because I like the braided effect. And she's got a magic join for the corners as well that let them look very nice um what else can i say i only did a um a, a round of uh i think two rounds of single crochet around the um the whole border and then uh slip stitches i did just did a round of slip stitches around the border in the top of the last row and that gives it a um, like a little three-dimensional little edge that um, I like very much but um, I always get confused I lay out my my squares and then when I join them I think that is the order the join is done in and then after I've finished this whole blanket 
and I'm busy with the joining the polka dot squares that I'll show you in a minute. I realized that I'm getting confused with how I stack my squares to join them. I thought it's like a, a zigzag kind of uh, way, um, going that way and then that way, the way that you join the squares, but that's not the case. It's You come back every time if you use a continuous join. You come back and then you join from this side again and then you come back and then you join from this side again. And that struck me when I was busy with the fourth row of my polka dot squares that I'm getting confused. So my layout in this blanket is not exactly as I planned it to be. Um, but it's done now. And um, the only problem is that I've got these two was not supposed to be next to each other. <laughs> and, um, well, that's what happens when you get confused. And I don't know why. I was so sure I'm doing it correctly and I'm joining them in the right order. And as I say, it struck me, I think, yesterday. I couldn't understand why, was, why are these two squares that look almost similar in color next to each other because I'm sure I didn't put them I didn't lay them out that way and then I realized what my mistake is but it's done now <laughs> um, I'm not going to let that um, I've got a friend that really likes this blanket and I think um, I will put her name on it um, if, if she's happy with or if that two squares that or the layout that's not how it's supposed to be, if that doesn't bother her. If it bothers her, then I will, it will go to somebody who doesn't, um, who wouldn't notice. <laughs> so that's my mitered square blanket. As I said be, in previous podcasts, I was inspired by Stitching Time Blanket. That's a knitted mitered square blanket by Kay Jones. You can go and find that pattern on Ravelry. I bought that pattern as well and I would really like to knit one like this as well. I like the um, the layout because you don't have a heavy blanket that you have to add mitered squares to all the time and it gets uncomfortable to work with. So you've only got, you can do it in four or nine or um, bigger, more squares if, if you want to. Um, 16 whatever um, and then you don't have a big blanket that you are knitting squares into or crocheting squares into the whole time and that you have to turn around all the time so I like the layout of, of this kind of blanket very much and um, then I quickly want to show you um, the polka dot blanket that I told you about I'm trying to finish a few of my blankets and um, they all come from um, last year and um, I very much want to try and um, minimize my large whips, whips, that's blanket whips. I've got a few now at the moment and um, I think it will be better for, um, not that I'm stressed out about it, but um, there's so many things I want to make and smaller things I want to make, knit, that I think, think I've got maybe too many blankets um, on the go at the moment so all the squares is joined for my polka dot blanket the polka dot squares is a pattern by little woolly you can find it for free on her blog she's got two versions just make sure that um, you find both versions and see which one you prefer so this is all the squares It's a, um, it's a generous, I think it will be a generous size lap blanket or, or um, for a single bed um, at the bottom of the bed or uh, over a couch or whatever. The problem with uh, if you're making blankets with a merino, like a, a worsted or light worsted merino yarn, 
um, the blanket gets very heavy if you make it too big. So I decided um, I really want to make the blankets and I like the patterns and the ideas. So um, I decided that I'm not going to make them so large because they just get too heavy and too uncomfortable to handle. And for me, it's all about the process and enjoying it. And um, if I think I've got enough squares or whatever, I join it and I give it a nice border or edge and then I'm satisfied. I've done this kind of pattern and this kind of make and then I can go on to the next project. As I said before, the, the, uh, for the polka dots, I used uh, one of a kind yarns. And then for the grey squaring, I used Adele's Moe. And I'm again you uh, joined with a continuous single crochet PLT join by Cypress Textiles. Um, I did steam it a little bit with my iron because after I've joined all the squares, it was really all crunched up. So I just steamed it a little bit so that I can show it to you. I still have to give it a nice border. And I think um, what I want to do is maybe use one or two of the variegateds that I've got enough of. I don't have a lot left, um, but I've got some of it some that was larger um, skeins. Hanks, I think um, I saw a, a picture the other day that actually what I'm talking about as a skein or a skein as some some people pronounce it is actually a hank but that's a not an easy word for me to pronounce whatever so um, I think what I want to do is incorporate some of that variegated in the border I'm not sure yet how I'm going to do it so that it's visible so because if I only do one row of single crochet it won't show up um, in between the, the grey so um, I will have to do maybe a few rounds of variegated I'm not sure I've got about three and a half um, balls of the grey left um, but if I don't use all of it it's fine I used most of it I tried to do some stash busting so um, this is all part of that um, accomplishment <laughs> if you can call it that um, something else I want to show you that I'm working at um, doing at the moment that I'm very that I like very much is a knitted mystery it's a cow but it's a mystery knit and the last clue comes out tomorrow and I'm very excited to finally get the last clue so that I can finish it um, here is mine so far it's joined there. So um, I think it will. Uh, let me try and see if I can. It's I don't know what's going to happen with this, but it's will be something I don't know that that there will be like a shawlet, but it's joined like a cowl I don't know but it feels very nice and I think it will be very wearable um, in, in winter and because you won't have a shawl that falls off or move all the time and um, it, will, it won't be so big because I see um, just take it off because it's quite hot here again today I see most people wear the shawls like a um, cowl or a scarf anyway so I think maybe this is a better option if you don't want a very big chunky piece of um, fabric around your um, neck I'm using bar fiber art sorry I've got a one of the fluff on my nose now at the moment um, I'm using bar fiber art in these three colors they just called out to be used. This is Madeleine, Indigo and Old Gold. 
and it's in her three ply double knit base. I really love this and I can't wait to knit up more stuff with it. It's the same yarn I used for that advent scarf that I knitted in December. Um, I fell in love with it then. It's um, I like the I like to knit with it. It's really very nice and it feels lovely. So this is um, uh, the scarf is um, it's not color work. It's well, it's color work, but it's done. Um, it's called mosaic knitting. So it's much easier to um, like, than color work because you only knit with one color, one strand at a time, two rows, and then with uh, the next color you knit two rows. Um, but it's also it's got floats as well. That's the back of of the mosaic knitting. Because there is some stitches that you are not knitting with that color, so obviously there will be a float. That's why I said um, if you um, have to knit color work flat, color work that's not in the round, you can use the same principle. The only difference is you won't knit with the one color for two rows. You will, um, after you've done the one color, because there's more than one color in a row, um, you will knit with a one row um, and then shift your um, knitting back to the start of the other side over the needles and then pick up your other color that you want to knit with and use that color again until you've got all your all your colors at the other side and then you can turn your work and when it's a knit row then it's fine if you like if it's comfortable for you then you can then use two stranded or three stranded color work knitting for your knit rows it's a pull rose that's difficult um, as I said previously and when I have to knit flat then for my pull rows I use this principle that I slip the stitches that I don't have to knit in that specific color and then I just shift my work back to the beginning of the other needle and pick up the next color and knit that um, through to the other side so it's um, it's the same principle than mosaic knitting, but this is the first time that I'm actually knitting a, a whole um, um, project in, in uh, mosaic knitting, and I really I enjoy it very much. I, I really like it, and I want to do more scarves and things and wraps maybe with mosaic knitting involved in it. So that is, um, this is called the Young, Scrappy and Cozy Mystery Knit Along by Lyrical Knits. I will as always put um, the names of the patterns and the designers in the description box below. That is um, then the Young, Scrappy and Cozy Mystery Knit Along and tomorrow is time for the last clue. Then another thing I'm busy with that I want to show you quickly. Let me just pull this so that I can reach. Um, I'm busy with the Kimberly shawl. Um, it's uh, the original pattern is in um, um, nurturing fibers sock yarn, sock weight yarn. And I've got a lot of that. What what draws me to patterns nowadays is if I know that I've got um, the exact right yarns or I've got the perfect yarns for that project in my stash. That's what draw me to patterns at the moment. Because I don't, as I said before, I don't want to go out and buy yarns to do a project. I will add yarn if I need something for a project, but I don't want to go and buy for an entire project. I, I would really like to use more of my stash because I've got beautiful yarns. So this is the Kimberly uh, shawl, and I've started with, with the first um, section. That's just got a stitch, and the color, um, that color is, um, I think it's, I don't know. I don't know what the color is of this one. Um, because it was wi um, wind up already in my stash and I don't know what I did to the 
do the um, um, ball band um, I will look it up and put it in the description box below but this is my first color and then um, it's got sections of brioche um, this is the brioche section and that I'm doing in um, it's conch shell not sure how you pronounce that it's this color it's more like a peach peachy color but um, I'm going to rip this brioche section out again I'm struggling with the with the increased side and um, I I've I did yesterday I did quite a large section and I ripped it all frogged it all and I've tried again um, my own to do my own thing here at the increase side but I don't think it's I'm not entirely happy so I'm going to frog it again and try one more time if I can't get it right then I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with that but I really want to do it um, it's a very very uh, nice simple um, I don't know where I've put the pattern I'm just going to reach and then I can find the pattern sorry for that um, here's a small picture of um, the shawl so it's got garter sections and brioche sections that um, alternate and the pattern is by um, Heike Gittens of Made with Loops um, and then my third color I want to use is this um, brownish color with the um, speckles in and it's called satchel I love this color so um, this will be my three colors um, this is also got brown specks in it and the um, apricot pinkish speckles so that's why I thought that this will make a nice combo I really really want to do this so um, I'll just have to try and figure out the increase side so that I can do it because it's not what I'm used to it's a different way of the patterns that I've done that is a very intricate um, brioche lace shawl that I made last year if you remember the blooming, blooming brioche shawl and um, I didn't have any issues with the um, increased sides but with this one I've got I can't seem to get it look nice but I will try again so that is um, that one and then I've got time I see still to show you something else that I've started but I've put it away because I've got too many whip, whips um, I've got some um, small yarns left over as you know I'm doing with the same yarns that I used for the mitered squares and the polka dots I'm using that um, giant square that I'm knitting giant scrap square that I'm giant scrappy square that I'm knitting that I've showed you in a previous podcast but I've still got some um, because that that's got um, blanket is becoming quite large so I really I don't actually want to use these small pieces in them in, in that blanket because then every row I will have to join or every half row I will have to join another yarn so um, I uh, decide I want to see how the northeasterly blanket will look in in this uh, sport weight of one of a kind not sport weight it's more like a, a four ply light worsted um, in one one of a kind yarns um, and I really like how it's um, how it looks it's a north northeasterly blanket by Kananigans, Kananigans, I'm not sure how to pronounce that as well. 
But this is all I have. Um, so this will um, also be a lab, lab, lab blanket. And if um, the scraps, I, I've, I've got a lot. I've only got these. If they are all knitted up and um, then this blanket will go into hibernation to wait for more of these four ply one of a kind yarn scraps. Um, I know that there's, uh, there has been issues about the, the make one right and make one left um, for um, that you have to do um, in the middle of this strips. Um, I don't like like them because um, they, I don't know, mine always get out too tight. It's uncomfortable stitch to make. So um, I do a yarn overs. And what I do um, at the wrong side, I treat the second yarn over as a make one right. So I take it, the yarn over off the needle and reposition it on the needle and knit it as a make one right. And I think that um, I've, it's quite neat to me, um, in the, the increases. I'm not uh, really giving away the pattern because she's got, it's a paid for pattern, but she has got uh, uh, YouTube videos um, on her channel um, for specifically for um, uh, some stages of this blanket. And one of them is about the, uh, make one right and make one left. So, um, but I, I'm doing yarn overs. I'm going to do my strips separately and then join them with mattress stitch or something because um, otherwise it's going to, because it's uh, 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 light worsted, it will get heavy and hot and uncomfortable to, to work with. And I like that the, the strips are portable. So I can just grab this little um, basket. I like these kind of baskets a lot. It's got handles and I buy them at any of the, our plastic shops and I can just grab this basket and go and um, I don't have a big project and if a strip is, um, I think the strip is long enough, I can put it aside and start a new one and um, it's not a heavy project to carry around. So it's actually a nice project for on the go then. Um, what else did I want to say about it? Uh, I think that's everything. But this is, um, I've put it aside. Because I, I first want to finish my polka dot blanket. And try and um, get some success with the Kimberly shawl. And finish my... Um, cow mystery in it along. So that is that. Um, there's actually one other project um, that I wanted to show you and I forgot to get it. So I'm uh, just going to pause and then I'll be back. I'm back. Um, it's my bits and bobs blanket that I haven't talked to you about previously. Um, it's also a pattern by Kay Jones. Um, I love um, from the very beginning when a pattern came out I bought it because it's just I was fell in love with it then but I wasn't sure what yarns I want to use and then I came across some stash that I have um, it's um, I've got a lot of um, this uh, Skepius spirit in different colors I've got um, full skeins, leftover skeins. Um, let's see what colors I've got. I've got um, blue. I've got quite a few colors. I've got this red one. I've knitted up one of them in the blanket already. So I've got quite a few of them and then I've got this um, sock yarns. Um, this one, I've got this, also a sock yarn. And I've got this ones. 
And then uh, what I want to do is these are all color changing yarns. So I'm using this as my background color, the, the Scipia spirit that's more like a, a, a tonal color. And then for my second color, I'm using my uh, I'm using all these uh, color changing sock yarns. And sometimes I add a little bit of mohair. I've got some all kinds of these mohair yarns that I can add or that I have already added some of. And this, this is really, I'm really enjoying this tremendously. I will show you uh, what I have so far. It's a slow knit because it's quite large. I can't even show you. I think I was a bit over enthusiastic when I added 50 stitches to the pattern, um, what the pattern called for whatever I'm just enjoying it and I'm taking it slow this is a slow knit so this is what I've got so far at the moment I'm busy with if I can just now I have to find them I'm using this is also a sock yarn with mm. This is the other one. So I'm using, you are constantly, constantly knitting with two yarn, two strands of yarn. And I'm using a 4,5 millimeter knitting needles. And this is the combination I'm using at the moment. Um, first, I, I used, I think it was this green that I used with it. And when when the um, your, the wool that I was busy with, well, um, I knit it all up. It's finished, and then I added the grey one, like this. And I, I'm not sure if I'm going to knit this all up. I think I'm going to continue for a few more rows, quite a few, say so ten or fifteen rows of this combination. Then I will take this one away and add something else i was thinking of maybe putting that one in again it's also got gray in and then maybe later on some mohair as well and it's really very enjoyable and it's um very easy it's not brioche it's a very easy stitch it's just knit stitches no, no purling and no brioche so it's very easy I can really recommend this there you can see I've added some of the orange moe there's one stitch that I've missed but that's okay I think there will be a few of them And I'm also adding, um, I've got a little bit, I've got some one-of-a-kind yarns, um, very deep stash, that's got some sparkle in it. It's a Moe, uh, Moe bamboo blend mix. And it's got some sparkle in it as well, lyrics. And I'm adding that as well. So I will, for example... Um, I've got another one here. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to use it because um, I will never be able to get these yarns again. But they add such um, a lovely dimension to the blanket that I really want to add a little bit of it. So this, this looks to me looks like a nice combination as well. And it will change the color of this completely. I might um, add some of this later on as well and then there will be little specks of sparkle in the blanket as well so this is a bits and bobs blanket by Kay Jones and I'm really enjoying um, knitting this I'm not sure um, we've got some extreme heat going on here and even with the air conditioning on I sometimes um, I'm, it's too hot to knit on this blanket so I 
um, prefer to um, knit on this um, when it's these cooler days. Um, and I try to add a few rows every now and then because I really enjoy it. Oof. It's so, it's going to be the cuddliest night. It's going to be big. But um, so if it takes me two years to finish, that's also fine as long as I'm enjoying it. And I love, as you know, I love color marling and marling and color melting. And I'm doing both in this blanket. And um, if you play with yarns and colors, uh, a pattern will never bore you. So that is why I so um, like it so very much to um, uh, play with yarns like this. And this is all yarns out of my stash. I didn't buy one single um, ball of yarn for this blanket. It's all coming out of my stash. And um, it really, it's so satisfying if you can go stash diving for a project and use some of the yarns that you have. And that's why I always promote to love your stash and use your stash and enjoy your stash. And if anybody else thinks you are not totally um, all there, then it's their problem, not yours. That's how I feel about it. So I think that's about it. I'm not sure why my I've still got time and I think I've said everything I want to say today and show you today. But I'm very proud of myself because I think it's only been a little over two weeks since my last podcast. Um, I think this one is number 13. Um, the last podcast took forever to upload. I think there's something really very wrong with our internet um, uploading speed. Downloading is fine, but uploading is horrendous. So, um, sometime tomorrow or whenever, I hope it will be uploaded. Uh, I hope you have a nice day and um, I would like to um, wish you a happy weekend and uh, I hope that you will get some knitting and or crochet time for yourself and um, enjoy whatever you are making and never ever feel guilty about the amount of whips you have you will eventually finish each one of them and just enjoy the moment and the process and if there's something that you really feel you need to start it immediately just go for it and then when you're over that excitement and um, you are into the project and you've worked on it for a while, then I think it will be easier to put it aside and maybe work on one of your other whips again. I've got a friend that I'm talking to about th this kind of motto and I think she agrees with me totally about that. So I think that's all I have for you for today. Have a nice day. Goodbye.